Kamaru Usman thinks it was hilarious how the security at UFC 310 didn't realize Bilal Muhammad was the welterweight champion. What are we doing? When the, what are we doing when even the security work in the UFC event don't know you are a champion? Oh my Damn. God. <laughs> Kamaru, Kamar, you enjoying that little too much, My bro. bad. Too, hey, too it, it, it was just, it was, it was just the, the, it was the time. Cause I, I remember when I saw it too, I was like, yo, Joe Rogan had to vouch for you to get you co to come do security. Did you hear what Joe Rogan said? Oh, he's the champ. Let him in. And I know Joe didn't even mean it in a negative way. It just, Joe, I mean, obviously Joe's a comedian. It's just natural timing and delivery. It just hit the mark. And that's what I found really, really funny. But I was thinking the same, like Joe Rogan had to vouch for you to get through security. Like, what are we doing as at an event that you can't even, they don't even know you're the champion. So I thought that was just hilarious. That wasn't me trying to like cast shade or anything like that. Like you thought, it, we all thought it was funny. I'm sure the world thought it was funny. Marab Davalashvili gives his side of the story on the altercation he had in the crowd at UFC 310. Marab posted this to his Instagram. He wrote more lies, disrespect, and deliberate provocations from Umar's team. Here's the real story. Exposing the guy who grabs Mirab's arm physically and insults him is not just a fan, but teammate and friend of Umar and Dagestani's. You can see Mirab walking filming his friend Aljo when guy grabs his arm and starts insulting him with phone in his hand. Turns out he is not just fan from Kazakhstan, but a provoker. And as Mirab said, he was insulting him. You're gone, bro. You're gone. Later that day, Umar posts stories with the guy and his squad. And there is even more pictures from years ago with him and Dagestanis. Media says Mirab got into with a fan, and the guy himself says Mirab said something about Shavkat, while Kazakhstan media promoted it like Mirab disrespected Shavkat and the guy is hero, but obviously this is not coincidence. Mirab is good with Shavkat, and all this happened in 15 seconds. This was just Dagestani's dirty trick and provocation. Bilal Muhammad says that he will walk through Shavkat Rachmanov. Bilal thinks he's better everywhere. Speaking to ESPN, Bilal says the only thing that I saw is that I win. Regardless of when it is, that's how it's going to be. I knew that I was going to be able to beat both of them, whoever came out on top. But after watching it, getting another five rounds of seeing it, now I know it's going to be a fight for me that I'm going to walk through. I think I'm a better striker. I think I'm better everywhere. People will sit there and call me a grappler. But in the Leon fight, I outstruck him. He was supposed to be the best striker in the division. And then I walked him down and broke him on the feet and on the ground. I had a hundred more strikes than him. So people could say what they want to say, but I think I am the best striker in the division. And the way that I fight, it's different than the rest of these guys. It's hard for these guys to catch reads on me and figure me out until you see me in front of you. And then when you see me in front of you, it's already too late because I'm hitting you. I wouldn't have given him those times to rest, right? There's times when he's resting on the cage, holding him. They're holding over under. You're getting the ref having to tell you to work, work. There won't be that moment with me. I'm going to be the one with the foot on the gas. I'm going to be the one pushing him on the fence, taking him down, letting him back up, taking him down, letting him back up. If you've ever felt that before, you're going to be drowning. It's going to feel like there's nowhere to go. It's going to feel like you're in quicksand. And the same way Leon felt it, and he broke, it's going to be the same thing with Shavkat. Robert Whittaker thinks Drikas Duplessis will defeat Sean Strickland once again in their rematch at UFC 312. Rob thinks Hamza Chamayev beats both of them. I'm surprised Sean literally just sat out. Like everyone was laughing at him when he said, I'm going to sit out until I get my title shot. And yeah. the dude straight up got a title shot. Props for that. Like, <laughs> like you've got to give it to him. Guy, guy like straight up stuck by what he said. Mm. Um, but in my opinion, I don't see the fight going any different, any different. Like, Duplessis such a dog in there. He's going to come with the same aggressiveness and, and game plan. What is Sean, what could Sean do differently to change the outcome? Yeah. What do you think Hamza does against Strickus or Sean? Like, do you think he'd be the favorite against either of them? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to, like, I can't see, I don't know. I think he just takes him down and, and and does the same thing like not necessarily to me but to like how he beat Usman you know like I, th I can or how he beat Ger Burns I can see those sort of fights I think he'd have more success with Strickland than Duplessis mm -hmm. 
just for because sure. Duplass, he's like a big dude. But ultimately, I, I can't. I don't know. I'll be stopping that first takedown is so crazy. That that the way he shoots in that that first shot is yeah. crazy. How do you stop that dude? <laughs> Jump over him, <laughs> like. <laughs> Armand Sarukian has one last cheat meal before starting his diet for UFC 311. He posted this to his Instagram. He wrote, diet starts on Monday. Diet starts tomorrow. Aljamain Sterling reflects on his loss to Movzari Vloyev. Aljo says backstage after the fight, he was very unsure about the future of his MMA career. Check out Aljo's full reaction video on his YouTube channel. Link's in the description. It is what it is. Ah, better man won. So we'll just, uh, I'll sh I will share something with the fans too. I, when we were in the back room, yeah. um, Ray had just stepped out and uh, I told the guys, I was like, uh, I'm gonna let you guys know. I, I don't really know what I'm gonna do from here. I don't know if I'm gonna. I mean, I need to let it clear a little bit, settle a little bit. But I was like, I just at 35, I don't know if I really want to climb the ladder all over again. Like from, I don't say from scratch, but the end goal is so much further. It's just I'm at a point where it's like, is that worth the time invested for the surgeries, the pain, the training, the sacrifice? Like, do I still have that fight to commit to do that all the way up into the belt again, knowing that there's still a good chance, like there's still some other dogs that I could potentially fight and might go my way, you know, so I'm not ignorant to that. So it's just kind of like making a decision, like, do I continue or do I just help out the guys and help them get ready for their fights and whatnot? Um, and maybe just take fun fights. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to retire. Um, but I got to see what the UFC make a decision to go from there to see what where my positioning is. I, I just don't feel like I could have lost stock in that. If anything, I feel like I should have gone. I should go up in the rankings. Um, Mosar, they finally did the right thing. Put him back at number five where he mm -hmm. was uh, before the fight. And they had me at nine. Uh, I mean, I would find it hard to not put me at seven or even six. Like it's a top contender like that. Number one contender fight. Lodge the right thing in the rankings to mm -hmm. put me in a good spot because they bumped me down and that's just weird and Daniel Cormier believes Ian Gary will be disappointed when looking back at the first two rounds against Shavkat DC also says that he thought the face-off between Shavkat and Bilal Muhammad was weird Ian Machado Gary versus Shavkat Rachmanov and it was good it was a good fight it picked up late Machado Gary will look back on this and be very disappointed at the way that he managed round one and two because in round one and two, not much happened at all. But the few things that did happen was enough to give Shavkat those rounds. Shavkat did a better job in round four getting takedowns. But in round five, Machado Guerra was pressing, making him work, and he almost got a submission. That was exciting. When you get guys that know each other really well, there's a danger that the fight could turn into something that you kind of expect if you know mixed martial arts, where it's almost like a chess match and it's not as fun. That's kind of what we got with these two tonight. Malal comes into the ring, Shavkat wants to face off, but I gotta be honest, it was weird. It was weird. I don't love face offs when you have a translator, especially when Malal, as much as people wanna hate him, He's not a disrespectful guy. So it doesn't make that moment that you're looking for when you bring a champion in the ring. You know, when Volk came in after Taporia beat Max, they shook hands and they left. It was very respectful, right? But you understood what they were saying. When O'Malley, right, was in there after beating Aljo, before when he was about to fight Aljo for the belt, Marab takes the, the jacket, that makes a memory. 
this tonight, I don't think it served the purpose that you want as a promotion in regards to what you're gonna do to try to build that fight. Drikas Duplessis had a message for Sean Strickland. Drikas posted this to X. He wrote, this time they won't call it a robbery. They'll call it attempted murder. Hashtag UFC 312. Hashtag prepare to be amazed. While live streaming on Twitch, Colby Covington went off on both Hamzat Chemaev and Kamaru Usman. He calls Hamzat a scammer and Usman a cheater. The thoughts on Chuck Coben? I mean, the guy's a scammer, dude. Look what he did to all his fans, man. He scammed all his fans with that, that crypto scam. I would never do that. So many people have brought me a crypto scam to pump and dump on my fans. I would never do that to my fans. I would never take you guys' harder money. You know, I, I make good money in the UFC. I'm thankful to, you know, have the career that I have. And it's because you guys, without fans and supporters, we're nothing. So, you know, shots a little bitch and he's lucky we never crossed paths. I would have broke his ass inside that octagon. Coben, who is the opponent you fought that you hate the most? Definitely Marty Juiceman, just because he's a cheater and he's a coward, and he, you know, he 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 definitely cheated multiple times in our fight. So, just can't respect someone that cheats in a fight. I've never cheated. You know, I, I've done everything the right way. You know, didn't cut corners, didn't ask for shortcuts. Had to go the long way, so. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's in reference to Sean Strickland going off on Hamzat Chemaev. Says Sean coming in heavy with the jab and teep kicks. How will Hamzat deal with such ferocity? The second one's from Random Dude 499 Says couldn't be happier we didn't hear from Dylan Dennis or McGregor this episode. And the final one says Sean needs a doobie. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.